Hey everyone, Cassie Draws here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into today's video. But first and foremost, a big shout out to our channel sponsors here on YouTube and on Twitch, Chart Pack, Molotov, and Grumbacker. Thank you so much for supporting my work and of course, sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and get started. So to start off this piece today, I'm going to use the Molotov black liner pens that you can see here. Now these all vary in different sizes and I've selected a few that I think will work best with this piece today. This is a five by seven watercolor, so it is quite on the smaller side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the 0.05 and that's going to allow me to get these really tiny details into this eye area and around the piece. Now, some artists may prefer to just watercolor directly on their graphite sketch and please feel free to do so. You can omit this step, you can skip this step. If you do not like the look of ink and watercolor together, you do not have to do this. This is just my preferred style. I feel like it's a lot um, easier for me to follow. I don't get um, as lost when I'm watercoloring and keep in mind, I am very, very novice with watercolor. This is probably my third watercolor piece in my whole art career. So um, please bear with me. I am by no means an expert. And so use these little tips and tricks and things that I have learned along the way in your own style and what works best for you. So once the inking process is complete, I'm gonna go ahead now and start taping down my paper to my desk with some washi tape. So I have chosen roughly about a half inch border all the way around. You can choose however thick you would like. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start securing this paper down to my desk. Now, the reason why we do this is with watercolor, we are gonna go ahead and load up this paper with a lot of water and a lot of paint. And if the sheet was just by itself, not taped down, as the paint dries, it would start to curl and buckle and it's really hard to flatten out after you've already painted it. So I just prefer to tape this down and you can see that I'm slowly starting to prepare and load up my brush with a lot of water. And now it's secured, tied down, I don't have to worry about that and can peel it off when I'm ready and completed the painting. Now I've started with a lighter wash. Um, you'll see that I'm going to add multiple colors and multiple layers, but I'm just going ahead and I'm doing a light wash to start a base for the background of this painting. So now begins the fun part of actually painting our subject. So I have decided to go in with a blue and black mixture of watercolor, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start blocking in where these shadows are on the zebra subject. Now, I avoid black paint, and if you've watched my acrylic videos before, uh, you will know that I tend to avoid using black acrylic painting or any black paint just straight out of the tube. So I am a huge advocate for mixing black with other colors like blue or brown and I find that it gives you a more natural shadow and areas that you really need it to be pigmented and sort of opaque you can go in with the black on top and you will see a difference in your painting so you can see here that I'm mixing in black with blue and then I will come in with black and brown as well since the zebra is a little bit dirty and a little bit on the brown side as well so I'm just going in and I'm starting to mark in these areas where these shadows will be all along the face and the body. A thing to note as well, and something that I have learned over my little bit of time that I've watercolored very quickly, is to really work in layers and have a lot of patience and wait for these layers to dry. So I'm going in with the lightest possible amount of paint, and then I'm going to slowly start to block that in as we progress in this video. So don't be afraid. If you think it's really light, it will get better. 
So zooming in now into one of my favorite parts of any painting, the eyes and the face of the subject, I'm going ahead now and I'm slowly starting to darken these areas around the eye and starting to block in these details even further. So you can see there that that brown is much darker than the original base layer and I'm just slowly going in with a very fine watercolor brush and I'm just going in and starting to plot in these areas and start to work slowly on creating more fur direction and fur shape and of course adding color and having some fun with what watercolor can do. So something that I discovered that I loved about watercolor is while I'm waiting for that top part to dry, I can go ahead now and I can slowly start working down the piece as well. So I'm starting with a brown and black mixture. It's very, very minimal black. And I'm just going ahead and starting to block in the muzzle sort of nose area of the zebra while the other section dries. So I encourage you to go ahead and kind of move around your painting and paint different areas that don't don't touch. Um, I learned very quickly that if you try to paint around a wet area of watercolor, you're going to have a muddy mess. So you can see that I am very, very far away from the area that I was working in, and it allows me to keep my productivity high. So in the spirit of layering, I'm going to go ahead now and start working on the top part and the bottom part of this painting and slowly start to darken those areas with that original shadow color. So you're going to see me kind of pass over these areas multiple times throughout the video. So I'm sorry that I keep repeating myself of like, make sure you layer and layer and wait for it to dry. <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of what watercolor is. Um, bless this medium. I love it. I think it's great and I'm learning, but um, it is definitely a very different beast from the acrylic that I am used to working with and like the two second dry time. So make sure you bring your patient pants because you're going to need them. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going to keep blocking in these layers and I'm going to keep um, waiting. <laughs> and once they're dry, I'm going to go ahead and go over top of them once more. Now I must admit, because I am new to watercolor, as I've said, um, this part kind of intimidated me and by kind of, I mean a lot. Um, I, I'm again, I'm not used to working in this way. And so kind of really pumping up that color like I am now was very, very intimidating. And you'll see just in a few moments here, getting ready to do the muzzle as well was like a, you know, one of those moments, but I wanted to share my process. I wanted to share this video with you because I think it's important to learn these things together. And if I can help anyone in your art journey, I have done my job and this video has been absolutely worth it. So you can see me kind of take these really awkward pauses like I'm staring at it. <laughs> and I just kind of say, you know what? Let's just go for it. So here I am. I am adding a blue and black mixture together um, with a little bit of brown in there. It's this really kind of muddy color, but it actually worked out really quite well for the effect and the color of the zebra's sort of nose. So I'm just going in and I'm really starting to block in this color. And once this section is dry, you can really see this piece start to turn a corner and kind of look less like a light muddy mess and actually turn into a painting at least in my opinion um, that's where I felt this piece really kind of turned a corner so um, I hope so far it's been helpful and I hope I've put in some good tips
All right, so I bet some of you were sitting there going, "Mm mm-hmm, Cassie, this is cool, but I, you know, where are the stripes, girl? You haven't hit that part yet. Let me tell you, if I thought the muzzle was intimidating, this part was even worse. Um, I must admit, there were so many times where I'm like, I'm gonna mess this up, I'm gonna mess this up, say goodbye, YouTube video, and I'm happy to say that we pulled through, we made it, and it didn't turn out that bad, all right? There were moments where I was like, ooh, this is sketchy, but, I'm happy with it. I think it turned out great. And um, one little piece of advice that I would say, um, if you are following along and painting a zebra or any sort of animal that has texture or pattern, leaving those um, under sketches in was really, really helpful for me. I contemplated so many times erasing it saying, oh, but it might show through. Um, By leaving those, it was a really great roadmap for me to be able to follow along and not get lost. Um, The top of the zebra's head gets so confusing. And so that was when I was really thankful that I had these in. So I wish you the best of luck with your texture and pattern in your piece and let me know how it goes. Did you leave your sketch underneath or did you erase it and did it work for you? So something you will see me do quite often in my watercolor paintings is actually bring in colored pencil over top of the watercolor. So I will use, for example, this blue and this white to fill in those eye highlights and kind of get a more opaque look to the painting. And I find that I like the texture that it brings. The colored pencil tends to kind of skim over the texture in the watercolor paper and give me a really cool effect. So if you would like, feel free to try this in your painting. Otherwise, please feel free to omit this step Um, I just wanted to add that in before I continued doing the stripes of the zebra. So you can definitely see now looking back at this painting and where we are so far that really being patient and working those layers in watercolor makes a huge difference. You can definitely see the difference between the finished head area and the lower neck and beginning of the chest area of the zebra which has only one or two layers of watercolor at this point. So you can definitely see a big difference and I'm just going to go ahead now and start blocking in these ears and the hair even further. So I'm going to give that hair that first layer which I think will bring this painting all together and it really acted as kind of a bow for this painting kind of like a big Christmas gift once the hair was on there I really felt it start to come together and I was really excited at this point to get the bottom part done as well and start to wrap up this painting 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to add our next layer of the shadow part beneath the head. And just as we had done before, I'm going to take that black and blue mixture and I'm just gonna go ahead and add another layer. So I'm going to let you enjoy with some music. We are going to rinse and repeat these steps until we have the entire bottom of the painting completed and shaded the way that we like. And of course, adding in those stripes as well as we had done earlier in the painting as well. So as I have done earlier in the painting on the face, I'm going ahead and adding this sort of burnt sienna color to the body of the zebra to kind of create a sort of dirt texture and a little bit more uh, particles and dust and etc to his body so he's not so clean. And then I'm just going ahead and adding in some uh, Mars black pencil crayon just over the stripes as well, kind of being very selective of where I add these sort of darker parts of the stripes. The stripes are not completely black all the way through and they aren't uh, so opaque all the way through either. So I just wanted to kind of pick and choose certain areas. And I'm just going ahead now and adding in some darker shadows as well over top of the face and body area that I didn't feel got quite dark enough and so I'm just adding in some more muscle definition and adding in these finer little um, little tweaks to the painting that showed through as the paint dried. So after a few minor touch-ups at the end of this painting we are going to go ahead now and switch to the washi tape peel reveal which will happen at the end of every watercolor painting for me and so I'm just going to go ahead and peel this washi tape off again you could be using masking tape or whatever tape or product works for you and so it is going to reveal this beautiful pristine border and now with my painting you will see that I extended the line art past to the edge of the paper I wanted my zebra to look as though it was coming from a black and white line art and sketch and then bursting into color for the main subject of this painting so you will see some leftover line art and and that I will add in the extra stripes to that line art as well. And there we have it. There is our finished painting. Um, I had an absolute blast creating this. Again, I am a novice with watercolor, but I hoped throughout this video that I could share some things that I learned with you, whether you are learning watercolor or, you know, tackling a new medium, or maybe you're a pro. Maybe give me some feedback. Maybe give me some little tips and tricks. Again, I am so new to this, and it's just been a lot of fun learning and kind of adjusting my style to this beautiful medium. So if you like today's video, please leave a like and a comment down below what your favorite part of the video was and of course if you liked my content there are other videos to check out as well on my channel mostly right now based on acrylic but I'm hoping to kind of expand my horizons and create multiple different videos for you don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell to be notified when I upload next and if you would like to hang out live I stream on twitch twitch.tv slash Cassie draws I stream normally on Fridays and Sundays around 3 p.m. Eastern Eastern or 7 p.m. Eastern. Those are my most popular and most steady times <laughs> when I am on the most. So 
please feel free to hang out with us live. And of course, check out CassieDraws.com for my portfolio and my web store and Cassie Draws Art on Etsy. Enough of my shameless plugs. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye fam.